for uh, chapter 3, we have uh, three learning outcomes. So at the end of the lesson, you should be able to uh, first outline results, lineage, and biographical background. So when we say lineage, we will be tracing results ancestry, who his uh, great-grandparents are, his uh, grandparents, and uh, his parents. Okay. And second is to discover and trace results, educational background, and accomplishments. So we will also be looking into uh, the schools where he went, including his educational achievements. And the third is uh, to perceive the importance of uh, education through the educational life of Rizal. We are hoping that uh, through this module, you will be able to realize the importance of education by looking into the educational history of Rizal. Okay, so uh, with that, let's start with uh, Rizal's biography. When we say biography, this is uh, an account or a detailed description of the life of an individual. So in this case, we are looking into the biography of Jose Rizal. So uh, let's start with his full name. It's quite long. It's seven words or seven names. So his full name is Jose Protasio Rizal Mercado E. Alonso Rialonda. Right? So uh, Jose was uh, given by his mother which was adopted from the name of a saint that was saint joseph and uh, protasio was uh, also a name that was adopted from a christian leader right rizal is uh, the adopted surname of uh, the family of rizal so they adopted a spanish surname because at that time the spanish government re, uh, released an order for filipinos to adopt a spanish surname for the purpose of registration so rizal was uh, the chosen spanish surname for jose's family mercado is the real surname of uh, the family okay and uh, all the siblings and uh, the parents of uh, Rizal have been using or has been have been using Mercado as their surname. E or Y there would mean end. Okay. Alonso is the old surname of Rizal's mother and uh, Rialonda is the adopted Spanish surname of the family of Rizal's mother. So it's quite long because they, uh, he or they included a uh, adopted Spanish surname and a Filipino surname. Okay, so Jose was born in Laguna, particularly in uh, Calamba. And he was born on June 19 of 1861. So if you compute that, that would be 159 years from now. He died on 1896 at the age of... 35. Okay. By the way, Rizal or Jose never really wanted to use the last name Rizal. Okay. He even said that he felt being an, an illegitimate child because he was forced to use Rizal as his surname. Okay. So why was he forced to use Rizal? Because at that time, uh, the uh, Mercado uh, family was known to be uh, a defendant of uh, the Filipino in their their place against the abuses of the Spaniards. So, uh, in order to disassociate himself with uh, the Mercado, he was forced to use Rizal so he could freely travel without being questioned, without uh, having or gaining the suspicion of the Spaniards. So, in order for him to also attend schools freely, Okay, so he just opted to use Rizal following the advice of his family. His brother, Pashano, was using Mercado as uh, the last name and he was closely associated with uh, the Gumburza, or the three priests who were fighting for the rights of the Filipino people. Okay, and in fact, his mother, Doña Chudora, was uh, made to walk 50 kilometers just because he she refused to use Rizal 
as uh, her surname. So, uh, she uh, walked for 50 kilometers and then he she gained the suspicion of uh, the, to, the Spaniards to be anti-Spanish. Okay, and later on, she was imprisoned for two years. Okay, he, she uh, was said to be, uh, to have aided her uh, brother in poisoning the wife of his brother but later on she was acquitted and released because she was defended by two of the most prominent lawyers in manila at that time okay so simply a name using a name could gain you the suspicion of the spanish government okay all right so let's look at rizal's parents the father of rizal is don francisco mercado rizal and uh, his mother is uh, Teodora Alonso Rialonda. Okay? Don Francisco was uh, the youngest of the 13 children of his parents. So his parents are uh, Cirila Alejandra and Juan Mercado. Okay? He was born in Laguna, in Binian Laguna. He is an educated, was an educated person. He studied Latin and philosophy at the College of San Jose. All right, and he married Doña Teodora at the age of uh, 30. By occupation, he was a tenant and a farmer. Tenant meaning he was uh, renting lands from the Dominican friars and uh, cultivating it as an agricultural land. So that was how they were earning their income before. And uh, yeah, he died at the age of 84. Doña Chudora was also an educated woman. So during her time, only a few women are able to uh, finish their education. Only those who belong to uh, the upper class or middle class family. He, she finished her uh, education at the College of Santa Rosa, which was then a well-known exclusive school for girls. She died in uh, 1911 at the age of 85. Okay. She was known to be a disciplinarian person okay. and, of course, a hardworking mother. And uh, she also had an eye a sickness or an eye condition. She had cataract and this condition inspired Rizal to uh, take medicine, right? And later on, he was able to uh, operate successfully on the eyes of her, his mother. Okay. So, uh, Francisco and Teodora lived in uh, Calamba, and it is where they uh, had their business, their farmlands, okay. and they were growing sugar cane, rice, and indigo or dye as their product. They were also engaged in um, trade, okay. so they trade their produce their agricultural pr products they also raised poultry or chicken so uh, in all of the, this Doña Tudora was uh, helping Don Francisco okay so uh, she assisted Don Francisco and in time the Francisco family or Rizal's family became one of the wealthiest in Calamba okay in fact uh, um, Doña Tudora even saw so, the declaration of the monument for Rizal. So she lived to so see the inauguration of the Rizal monument. And then after a week of seeing, witnessing it, she died in her house in Binondo, Manila. So where is the Rizal monument located? Do you know how it looks? Okay, so this is the Rizal monument. This is, of course, in Rizal Park along uh, Rojas uh, Boulevard in Ermita, Manila. Okay, right? Okay, so this is Colegio de San Jose. This is where Don Francisco finished his uh, um, degree, Latin and Philosophy. Okay, and uh, this was uh, previously annexed to the University of Santo Tomas, particularly the Department of Pharmacy and Medicine. Okay, so... Uh, in fact, it is here where Rizal took his four years uh, of medical degree and uh, he uh, observed 
in uh, uh, his writings, uh, he observed or he said that uh, the University of Santo Tomas uh, is quite backwards when it comes to teaching medicine. Okay? So um, they said that this observation of Rizal have become the inspiration for the school to uh, continually excel Okay, in the field of medicine and true enough to this day the, uh, the University of Santo Tomas is uh, one of uh, the recognized university in the Philippines when it comes to medicine okay. and uh, Pashano also studied at the uh, Colegio de San Jose so both his father Jose and Pashano are alumnus of the Colegio de San Jose okay and uh, so we have said earlier that this was part of uh, University of Santo Tomas and then the Pope uh, ordered the return of the Colegio to the Jesuits or the religious organization of the Catholic Church and this became a seminary and then until such time that it became a school of theology. Alright, so this is how it looks. The picture at the left is the original or the old version of uh, the Loyola School of Theology. And the picture at the right is the current look of the theological school. So this is located in Loyola Heights in Quezon City. It's still a, uh, it's, it's a school of theology. And this is Colegio de Santa Rosa where Doña Teodora was educated. So this was uh, originally established as uh, a, uh, an uh, educational institution exclusively for girls so that the uh, Indias at that time or the Filipinas could be educated. It was established in uh, 1750. Okay, so this is a, this was a Catholic school, and uh, the school survived until this uh, day. It is located in Makati, so they have a uh, um, pink campus in Makati. Right. So let's take a look at the Rizal children. So the couple had uh, eleven children, okay, two sons and nine daughters. Doña Teodora gave birth to uh, her first child, Saturnina, at the age of 24. Okay, so and then from there, nagkasunod-sunod na. So, 1850, and then 1852, si Narcisa, 1857, si Lucia. I'm sorry, 1850, Saturnina, and then Pasiano came next, 1851, that's after one year. After one year, Narcisa came. And then Olympia, Lucia. So, uh, yeah, sunod sunod sila. Okay. But, uh, right, Donya Tudora was really hard working to have raised, okay, 11 children. And uh, they were recognized as the wealthiest family in Kalamba because both are hard working. Okay. And, uh, Pashano, the second child, was uh, considered to be the second father of Rizal. Okay. Then Narcisa, who is Sisa in uh, the Nolime Tangere. By the way, Pashano was attributed to be uh, um, Pilosopo Tasho in Nolime Tangere. Okay. And uh, Olympia is uh, the fourth. We have Lucia as the fifth. Who married Mariano Herbosa. Mariano Herbosa, by the way, guys, uh, died of cholera, and uh, the Spanish government at that time refused to give him a Christian, give him a Christian burial, just uh, because he was associated with Rizal, who at that time was uh, very controversial because of his writings exposing the abuses of the Spanish towards the Filipino people. Okay, and then we have Maria Mercado as the sixth child, and then Jose as the seventh. He's one of our greatest uh, national hero, and uh, of course, uh, Rizal was uh, nicknamed Pepe. Okay, and then after Rizal, we have Concepcion as the uh, eighth. She died at the age of three, and this was considered to be the first sorrow of uh, 
Jose Rizal. Then we have Josefa, who died as an old mage at the age of 80. King Trinidad, who also died as an old maid at the age of 83. And the youngest is Soledad Mercado. Alright, okay, let's uh, take a look at Rizal's ancestry. Okay, saan ba nang galing si, si Rizal? So, in your family tree, ano ba ang kanyang puno? Alright, so, uh, I just simplified this, guys, because I know you will be coming up with your uh, own family tree for Rizal. So, uh, I simplified it as much as I can, just for the purpose of this discussion. Domingo Lamco was the great-grandfather of uh, Rizal, so uh, he was a Chinese immigrant. When we say Chinese immigrant, he was Chinese and uh, came to live in the Philippines. And uh, he adopted the name Mercado in 1731. He married Ines de la Rosa, who is half Chinese but uh, a Christian girl. Okay? Domingo Lamco came in the Philippines without uh, as a trader. So, he uh, did not have great wealth with him, okay? But uh, he rose and acquired wealth, right? And uh, Ines de la Rosa gave birth to Francisco Mercado. And uh, Francisco Mercado, uh, through hard work, owned the largest herd of carabaos in Binyan. So, by the way, Domingo and Ines... Uh, ch chose to live originally in Binyan, Laguna. And Francisco was uh, active in politics, okay, in local politics. In fact, he was elected as the town's Capitan del Pueblo around 1783. He was popular in his place. He was known to be a good nature, natured uh, person and would always uh, stand as godfathers during uh, as godfather during baptism and weddings so uh, francisco married bernarda monica and uh, bernarda gave birth to uh, juan mercado juan mercado was also active in uh, local politics and uh, he was uh, respected in binyan laguna Okay. He was the direct grandfather of Jose Rizal. He married Cirilia Alejandra, and Cirilia gave birth to the father of Francis, uh, father of Rizal, who is Francisco Mercado. Right? Uh, Francisco Mercado went to so from Binyan, he chose to go to Calamba and uh, live there. Okay. Now, uh, of course, we all know Doña Teodora gave birth to Jose Rizal. Alright, so from this we can see that the Rizal have a Chinese ancestry. Alright, and uh, uh, they built their wealth out of hard work. Okay, now let's take a look at the mother side of Rizal. We have Eugenio Ursua, who is a Japanese. So he is the great grandfather of Rizal from his mother side. Eugenio married Benigna, who is a descendant of uh, Lacandula, a Malay, who is uh, considered to be the last native of Tondo. Okay? Benigna is a Filipino. Okay? Benigna gave birth to Regina Rizua, Okay, And Regina married Manuel de Quintos, who is a Filipino Chinese lawyer who belonged to a well-known family in Pangasinan. Okay. Regina then gave birth to Brigida de Quintos. So, Brigida is a direct grandmother of Rizal. Okay. Brigida was an educated wo woman. He, is edu he was educated but chose to uh, become a housewife and he, she devoted herself to uh, taking care of her children. Right. And uh, Lorenzo Alberto Alonso was uh, the Spanish was a Spanish Filipino mestizo. Okay, so ang lolo ni Rizal ay meron ding dugong Spanish Filipino. Okay, so uh, Brigida nagkaroon lang ng Rialonda dito, guys, because uh, uh, Brigida and Lorenzo Alonso 
adopted the Spanish surname, which was Realonda. But uh, as I've said earlier, Teodora refused to use the adopted surname, which was Realonda. So she was just using Teodora Alonso. Okay. So we have Teodora Alonso who married Francisco Mercado. Okay. And Teodora was uh, an educate. Uh, she was. A very educated woman they say that she's uh, in, an intelligent woman okay magaling siya that's why you can see how she honed the skills of Rizal being the first teacher of Rizal okay she was the second daughter of daughter of Brigida right and uh, she was good in business okay so from this guys uh, the mother uh, um, looking at the mother side of Rizal, okay, he have or he had a Japanese blood and a Spanish blood. So if we look at his uh, ancestry, he had a mixture of foreign ancestry, mixture of foreign blood. Okay, we can also see that uh, he came from a family of educated people and a family who were involved in politics in and in business right so they belong to the upper class family this is Rizal's house okay and uh, this picture at the left is uh, the uh, original uh, version of uh, the Spanish style or Spanish colonial style house of uh, the Rizal family in Calamba. This was where Rizal was born. And uh, Rizal, Rizal's father, they said, took two years to build this house. But this was confiscated by the Spanish authorities. And in World War II, this was uh, destroyed and was eventually demolished. So the picture at the right what is uh, the current okay it was it, it was reconstructed all right just so that we can uh have a uh, uh reconstruction of uh, the uh, house of our national hero okay so uh, the upper floor served as the family's living quarters so this consisted of the living room, the dining area, the bathroom, and a library, which was then the largest library in Kalamba. Okay, and uh, the ground floor, okay, this uh, the ground floor served as a stable for horses, kulungan ng mga kabayo, and uh, um, car it's a uh, stable for carriages, so garahe ng mga karwahe. There was uh, also a part of the house at the ground floor where it was, uh, it's an open space, okay, where Rizal's mother kept he, her stores, her shops. So she had a flour mill, a dye factory, a drugstore, and a bazaar at the ground floor of their house, right? So from there we can say that Rizal belonged to a good and middle class family. So the family belonged to the principalia. When we say principalia, it, compose, it is composed of families who are educated. They are in the upper class in the pueblo or in the town. And they are a noble class family. So since they own the carriage or carwaje, okay, they are considered to be an educated family because it is a status symbol of the illustrados illustrados would mean educated right and they own the library which was the largest in Calamba. so this would mean that the family was very much um, interested in uh, education okay so they have educational achievements right, let's take a look at Rizal as a child okay so at the age of three Rizal already learned the alphabet. He already learned to say uh, his prayers as okay? so what was taught by his mother. Okay? 
and uh, he memorized those prayers. Okay, so who among us can uh, memorize prayers at the age of three? Okay, so at the age of five, Rizal was already an artist. He was able to read the Spanish Bible at age five, and uh, he was making sketches with pencil. He was also doing sculpture already. He was molding clay. Okay, and at the age of six, he was very much busy, too busy, with uh, improving his uh, craft, and he enjoyed uh, doing his artworks rather than playing with his siblings. So, um, he was, or his sisters would constantly laugh at him, laugh at him, and one day he got angry and told his sisters that, uh, um, it's okay, you can laugh at me now, but someday when I die. People will make monuments and images of me. And true enough, uh, to this date, we have uh, a monument of Rizal and uh, sculpted images okay, of him being our national hero. And this is this is a sample of uh, Rizal's sketch sketches. Okay, at the age of eight, Rizal was already a writer. He wrote his first poem in the native language entitled "Sa Aking mga Kabata." Okay, so this was uh, a uh, this was written in an appeal to the people to love our national language. Okay, and uh, he also wrote his first dramatic work at the age of eight, which was uh, a Tagalog comedy. So she wrote a manuscript, and uh, this was staged in a Kalamba festival. The manuscript was in fact purchased for two pesos by a Spanish. Alright, so aside from being a writer and an artist, Rizal was also a magician during his childhood. He learned various tricks like uh, making a coin appear and disappear in his fingers and making uh, a hand handkerchief vanish in thin air. So he enter entertained his town folks with magic exhibitions. So he was also skilled in puppet shows right okay so uh, with uh, all of this uh, he he was said to have been uh, doing meditations also in the lake shore of uh, laguna de bay okay so what was he meditating in there okay so uh, he was reflecting on uh, the sad conditions of his oppressed people at a young age. Okay? In fact, he wrote to Mariana Ponce and said that uh, at a young age, or even if he was a child, he saw the injustices and cruelties. So his imagination was awakened and he made a vow to dedicate himself to avenge the many victims of the Spanish abuses. So this was the idea that he had in mind and he studied and uh, he said someday God will give me the opportunity to fulfill my promise and true enough the Filipino people were inspired by Rizal and uh, that this is was in seeking independence for the Philippines. Okay, so this is Laguna de Bay Okay. This is just a picture of how it looks. Okay. Let's take a look at the her hereditary influences of uh, Rizal. So when we say hereditary influences, these are the behavior and uh, attitude that was passed on from um, ancestors by blood. Okay. So uh, Rizal have uh, or had Malayan ancestors. Okay. So ancestor in the person of uh, his great grandmother okay and uh, they said that from the Malayan as ancestors he took his he got his love for freedom his desire to travel and his uh, courage so Rizal was uh, the most traveled Filipino during his time and even up to now if we would later on be looking into the um, travels that he made across Europe the US and, and uh, Asia all right so uh, he got that love for travel from his malayan ancestors from his spanish ancestors he got the elegance of bearing yung pagiging elegante daw niya and his sensitivity to insult 
Rizal as a child was very sensitive to insult. In fact, he was known to have an average fight a day of two. So, ang average fights niya in a day as a child, idalawa. Okay, so if they would laugh at him, he would get angry and cha uh, challenge his uh, uh, classmate or his playmate to a fight. And he would constantly receive uh, punishments or blows from his maestro or his teachers. Okay. And uh, from the Spanish ancestry, he also got his being uh, a gentleman, his gallantry to ladies. And from his father, his father was known to be to be a hardworking man, and he got the sense of uh, self-respect, of uh, hard work, and the habit of independent thinking, because his father is was known for these characteristics. From his mother. He got his religious nature, his uh, spirit of self-sacrifice, and his passion for arts and literature. Right? Okay. So let's take a look at uh, the environmental uh, influences. So the religious atmosphere at home also influenced Rizal. The Spanish abuses and cruelties that he saw also influenced him. Okay. And uh, Pashano, his brother was uh, known to have influenced Rizal in terms of his love for freedom and justice because Pashano were telling Rizal stories about what is happening in the Filipino society. So it was from Pashano where Rizal came to know about the Kumburiza and later on he dedicated his uh, writings, one of his writings to the Kumburiza. From his sisters, he learned or he was influenced to be courteous and kind to women and uh, from his uh, uncles he have three uncles who greatly influenced him these are uh, the brothers of his mother okay all of the, the the three are the brothers of his mother uncle jose manuel and gregorio from uncle uh, uh, jose he uh, got the uh, or uncle jose taught rizal how to paint sketch and do sculpting okay so he supervised these activities of jose from tito manuel or uncle manuel he developed his uh, frail body or rather small and uh, they seem to be weak body by means of physical exercises including horse riding walking and wrestling and all these were done under the supervision of uncle manuel now we have uncle gregorio who influenced rizal to further love reading so rizal was voracious in reading good books okay and uh, of course the spanish abuses going back to the spanish abuses um, that were witnessed by Rizal, this awakened his spirit of patriotism and uh, inspired him to uh, consecrate or dedicate his life and talents to redeem his oppressed people. Okay. Right? So, uh, this would be it for this uh, video. Our next video discussion will uh, be tackling Rizal's education. Okay? So, thank you for listening, guys.